my name is John Zenon. I'm a musician. I've got Star Guard's disease. I was in primary school and it started. It took a couple of years to actually find out what it is. It went as far as people thinking that I'm actually lying about it. So are you essentially super short sighted? I wouldn't say that. There's just a certain area in my vision that's that's not basically there. I still play tennis, you know, I still see the balls. It's just detail. Detail is a problem. Detail is, is, is definitely a problem, you know, center vision and that kind of thing. But I can still remember sitting in the back of the class, still doing well at school, reading on the board, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's quite interesting because it's difficult to, in your mind to remember that you could actually see. The most difficult thing for me was is explaining the whole disease. Especially if you come into a new environment with new people, new friends, new colleagues, you know, you've got to explain the whole thing again about what it is, what it does, that kind of thing. But to talk about it, not really, no. So it's something you've accepted about Yeah, you, you accept it because you can go sit in the corner and, you know, and nothing will happen. But you can try and do something about it. And I think that is what this project is all about. I can take this thing, which is which is negative thing in a way, and I can turn it around and make it positive. And then use it in your advantage. And that is exactly what I'm trying to do this whole I can still walk, you know, and I can still be positive about it. one that described it as, you know, I told the doctor, I see islands. And after that, he took out his textbooks and, and they found it. And they diagnosed it in my sister right after that. Um, your sister's got it as well? My sister's got it as well. It's in our in our family. We're only the two children. I know of other other families that's also, you know, it's in the siblings, they, they all have it. it. It's a genetic thing. So there was a gene in my mother and in my father that together actually caused this. Those two genes work together and they uh, then cause the, the, the degeneration to happen. In the beginning it was, it was quite funny because um, no one really knew what was going on. No one really, you know, for me it was, someone just had to put the right lens in front of my eye and I'd be able to see again. So we, at an early age didn't really know what was going on. When I got to early high school and actually diagnosed it and I was told that this, um, that's what it is and they can't really do anything for me, uh, that's when it started becoming difficult because your mind then sort of changes things around and then you start believing, okay, nothing can happen, I can do nothing for you. Um, and sort of a negativity sets in in the beginning, you know, you get, you get angry at it and, and, and the other thing that made it dif uh, difficult at school was the fact that people, including teachers and other grown-ups, didn't understand it. Why do you wear glasses but you still can't see?
I love sport. I love doing sport. Since I was very young, I started playing tennis and I played rugby. Um, I was in a primary school where we had to do everything. It was quite small. So we had to play cricket and tennis. And at the beginning, it wasn't that bad. I think it started really becoming a problem late, you know, in, in, in my in late my school career when cricket became a big problem. Golf was a big problem. I uh, couldn't see the ball flying and you still play golf. I still play golf. I still love it <laughs> and uh, I can't see the ball flying but you know the whole golf is such a li lesson in life you know it just uh, to never give up you know that kind of thing and, and I think it's, it's such a big part of, of, of who I am and that's why I love the sport so much so that I don't even have to see the ball and I reckon that's when caddies you know that's where they come in they could actually find the ball and I just hit it I so it's quite nice. Yeah, the thing that it, how it affected me in my career was the, the the choice of career. The one there was there was two things that I really wanted to do in my life, except for being a musician, that would be part of it. Was to become a, a, a medical doctor. It was one of my big dreams, um, and or a pilot. And the day they diagnosed me, the doctor said to me, you know, there's two things you won't be able to do: is you won't be able to become a doctor, and you will never fly in a, an airplane, which was devastating. I mean, at the age of 15. That's your dream. That's what you you know. You start um, to think about what am I going to be one day when you get to that age. I started off at university, uh, studied uh, city and regional planning, which was quite a lot of study work, and that was quite a problem because you could only read for so long. You know, twenty minutes, and you're tired. And then normally in that that time, I'd become tired and I'd start writing songs. You know, pick up my guitar. And in the end, that sort of caused me not to finish my university. Uh, I then decided to maybe do something else where I, I won't be needing my eyes that much. So I became a chef, which in the end also actually showed that it was um, that you do need your eyes. The textbook says that it, it should stabilize after a while. Obviously, there's new research being done that you know that shows that your kind of diet that you follow, your habits, you know, drinking, smoking, and that kind of thing, uh, affects it. I would say definitely that, that it is slowly going backwards. Socially, a lot. Uh, the one big thing for me is um, obviously you can't drive. I definitely think that that is a, a big drawback and obviously the other part of it is as a man you know you've got you've got this sort of pride having a car and loving your car and driving and picking up your girlfriend and taking her to the movies now you get to this certain point where she needs to come and pick you up to take you to the movies you know for your for, for self-respect and for for just self-confidence it really it really makes a big makes a big difference in your life you know and you and I know that, that it definitely, there's certain places in life where I'm very confident, but it, it definitely affects your self-confidence as well, which is just not always too good. I've got friends that I go out and party with, have a few drinks and, and whatever. I love watching rugby on Saturday mornings. I love going to the cricket. You know, I've, I've got to take my binoculars and I've got someone sitting next to me telling me what the score is and what's happening if I can't see what's happening. But but still I'm there and I don't always see all the detail but there's definitely things that I sometimes feel I'm more normal than the normal guy you know because you suddenly have an, another way of seeing things and I think that's what really inspired the whole theme for inside the true sight of seeing um, is what is the true sight by seeing that person or by knowing that person you know without seeing it Most people don't even realize it, mm. because yeah. I, and that's the difficult thing about, about also about this whole thing. Because I look normal, there's no way that I can use it as an excuse and say, listen, uh, I, can't, I'm, I'm, I can't see, so now I've got to do a special job. You know, right? Yeah, but at the same time, you don't consider yourself disabled. Not at all. Even I think that you would, have that a would, disability. I think that would set me back so much. I think that would set anyone back. If you, 
if you sort of say, okay, I've got a disability, you know, then, but if you, if you keep on saying, listen, but I'm just as normal as you, I just can't see, then to get, to, to, to achieve your goals and to be normal and to still, you know, it, it's so much easier. I think if you accept it, then you, you give up. If I accept it, okay, I've got a problem, now I'm going to take early pension and whatever, yeah. <laughs> that kind of jazz. Put then me out the pasture, I'm done. Exactly, then I would have never, ever achieved any goals that I have. Mm. You know? You do have your down days though. You have so many down days where you just, you just think, I can't do this anymore. And I have had the ability to attract people towards me that always are willing to sacrifice. And there's so many people that I could phone if I need to get to town for some business reason or whatever, you know, to take me there. It's funny, when people want to help, when people see that, that, that they can help, that they can actually mean something, then they suddenly, they jump to it. Which yeah. is quite interesting, you can get the biggest idiots in the world and as soon as I can see shit, I can mean something to someone, then they, they suddenly jump to it. My, my plan that I've got is I want to make a d documentary about this that sort of moves away from the, the old scientific thing, you know, because everybody can go and read about macular degeneration and they go and read about star gods, whatever. But what is the influence socially on young people? There might be other people that's also musicians, there might be people that's, that also wants to be doctors and, and, and great ambitious people and the whole thing is to find out, you know, to, to actually hear these people's stories. Especially, uh, you know, people that has it, but especially people that doesn't have it. Teachers, you know, other kids, people that, you, you know, because you, you get this, you get this um, reaction from people, like I said earlier, about you wear glasses, but why can't you see? Because they don't understand it. A lot of people that I know have said, oh, we've never heard of this. And to actually find out um, what is the social effect on people's lives having this. You know, what, what, how, do, how do other people cope with it? I know how I cope with it. My sister knows how she copes with it. But other people, how do you cope? And, and all of these stories put together, I reckon, could, could, could bring a, a big awareness into the world. You know. Uh, because I can learn from, from you, how do you, what do you do to make certain things easier, um, how do you stay positive, because that's mostly the big thing, so that's, that's the big idea around this. I decided that, you know, you, you can make a documentary about being aware, but if you don't do anything, anything silly, you won't, I think, get the right uh, attention, where people would be attend on something very silly like climbing so Kilimanjaro backwards or something what like that. What is your silly plan? Well, what I decided to do is to walk from my house in Pretoria all the way back to the place where I grew up and where this whole problem actually started. It's approximately 280 kilometers from Pretoria. Okay, I still have to decide if it's going to be in three days or one day would be a bit impossible because I've worked out it's going to be about 70 hours of walking. But um, together with with the documentary, get people involved. To, if people want to walk with me, it's fine. If I walk alone, it's fine. It symbolizes uh, the whole thing about um, you know pushing through and and going you know going for something. And even though times get hard, you know you get to hundred kilometers and you're so tired you know it's just perseverance get through it get through the hard times get through the struggle and actually finishing it finishing the goal getting to your goal and whatever you want in life you know I hope that that people watching this if you, you want to make it positive then I want you to really be with me and we'll do this insight we'll show people the true sight of seeing
Your project involves um, getting involved with research and lots of things, but I understand you want to take a walk. Yeah, it's quite a crazy... Okay, cut. <laughs> okay, cut. I can hear it sizzling away and it was driving me bonkers. <laughs> so what? Uh, no, the um, the chickens. I could hear it. I thought maybe the potatoes were boiling over. But it's the potatoes, they must be cooked up. Oh, maybe. maybe. Tell us about your project. The project is called The True Sight of Seeing. It's a project to. <laughs> sorry, I'm going to. I got you on that one, sorry. Yeah, I was about to say, fuck me. Dude. But that's a good name for it, I think. The True Sight of Seeing. Yeah. <laughs> problem as me but they've also got problems so what I do is I would with my you know my my seeing and that's a girl from my friend of course Nini sorry girls would it be a frog got that that would be fucking awesome if I could remember the question inside of your professional career um bugger <laughs> inside of your professional yeah okay there's so many people, so many people that doesn't know about it. And <laughs> I've got to have my mouth full of dildum. <laughs> For God's sakes, I can't take it anymore. But eat the damn thing. Yeah, I'm sitting in the Okay, cut. Okay, cut.